recollections of war. A fading eagle flew frozen in fear past deserted flowers, in desperate land, and a rising earth halted for a hasty madness as time awaited a dead sun. Remember now the beginning, one fine day, when we came out of nowhere, in no cradle birth, one thunderous heartbeat separated animal from plant, and we stood up straight one day, our minds still a drunk sun even crawling. Later, in the breath of life, we knew the Tay churchyard must yawn now and then, but now we are helpless, we must fight to our worthless deaths, dying, screaming forgiveness, but, dies we must when peace is a barren land, daily now, one grips less firmly his last integrity, the essential life slips, where are the grown men, stuffed and rigid, where are they, where, they are so silent and meaningless to us now, they are no longer with us, and throughout the aftermath we could almost grasp it in our dreams, and hope that we might live to die far from the river of perfumes. Meanwhile, we are dying to live every day as we surrender our souls. Around us we see the bodies, they lie upon us, they died among us. Rising to our last stand we look, where are the grown men, the old men? We thought that we were loved then, but we've been betrayed, sold, lost, shall I try for fading woods, scrambling over the trails, searching for my life? I'll flee and fly over the leaves of yesterday, they crumble before my eyes, and there I will come out of it all with firm desire to laugh, love, and live. They're in a hilly grove near swelling stream by daisies, grass, and tree. Once more I escape the horrid death as the grown men approach. I try to see my way past the swiftly moving figures of the human race. Even now, those men with guns so loud are silently dying in the strife. Living in a time nigh for sighing, we rise for dying. Can this be life? Of course, all this it was our duty to bear. We bled our blood, we served, and during the lull of the monsoon rains, I began to drink, to honor my life, to hope, as dawn comes, much like a Chinese painting, too real to be true, I wait the artillery man, and cross the song bar to disarm the claymores, now it is lovely April and we're dying on this fine day in the time of our life, slightly sighing for crying Charlie, my banic blazes in scarlet, in death, and yet another hasty man gropes for the earth and escapes this horrid life. But there, on a cloud of thought, we fly by their ways with a life for ourselves. And then, they wither with the wind, those thoughts that once echoed, where they once were teeming, fighting. The forms now empty, there is only room to say let us kill him, as wrath's waver comes us and there in the cells of the brain where currents of feeling once surged, the minds will falters, and wavers between the emotion and the intellect, a shrill siren chilled with ill will, then, when he was yet young and fine, houses were crumbling, streets were heaving, people were weeping, dying, and others wished to live, from brothers to mothers, all live but the father, can you see the tears in the young one's eyes as the deathman cometh? The love and the feeling were nowhere, the men motionless and rigid, and, too, the air was not worth breathing, but, was filled and smothering, leaving the men breathless, helpless, and, of course, so lifeless. The blight was so death-taking, the sight of goodness never so breathtaking. Once in a while I'll wince in a smile for truth, Cringe at the fringe of love, it is my dream, a star shining somewhere in the universe, I can see it there in all of its dimness, through the plight of my brightness, it is there forever and still, it is the one the thinkers thought for ages, as dreamers dreamt time after time, when hoped even the hopeless, as slept the sleepers into oblivion, while philosophers pondered infinitum, as wept the weepers for a long time, when pitted even the pitiful, all the saw on earth was lost. There hated the loveless in the wasteland. There the dying lived for a lifetime as all the wise men great and died. 
So now I'll let my enemies grow old as my wine yet flows sweet and pure. Here comes the slush of dim seeping over us, belching with contagion. The pleas of the corrupt fly out. They cry out. Their lives are snuffed out. The good Friday mourners yet weep for man. For everyone. For eternity. At life's end the silent men array themselves. Finally, they're for the asking in the set of the dead. Prisoners of themselves. Cautious pilot ponders. As their my star shines in the springtime of life. The star is a beacon in the night of terror. Fading in the search for the valiant. How can I live? How can I die? Look around. There are other worlds. See. The grass is high and green on the far side of never. Find for me the sun shining. The streams flowing. The forests. The fertile meadows. The soldiers moved slowly now to make their lives last. A searching band. And fighting has fled on the border. Now hurry death or hurry darkness. Deciding at last. I made an easy day of it. Staring life in the face, indulging in a vast wonderland and wilderness of childish fancy and fantasy, and I laughed a lot louder then, feeling no need to weep in pity for them, or to cry for the scandals who would grasp at life from graves in war. It was then that I saw the life, the awe, the infinite, the good, and my end, to see where my youth and laughter could go. I lived and died to be free. My mind took no mind. Yes, it was good to be loved then, to be young again. Whenever I returned from the trip so far, back to CSC Pack, I would stand in the center of the circle of palms, and Ben and Lena of civil service would always come out to hear the stories, plus, about the supply and intelligence installations, even of the uneventful journeys, but none of them were totally uneventful. There were the exciting airports, both normal and military, and exotic locales, such as Okinawa and Hong Kong. Between the long flights with the tapes and the duplicates occupying a first-class seat beside me, white, women, sock, and deaf made for a curious mixture of emotions on these vacations, but who, really, needed a vacation from Hawaii, the Pearl and the Paradise, and then it was up the mountain, again, to home and heart after a stop at the PX to get something to grill.
near the University of Saigon. I once saw a college student serving in tennis very distinctively, with an American whist serve. In 1975, Sun Ho fled the falling Saigon in an overcrowded boat, and had turned up at IBM within a few years. I saw him serving at the IBM Country Club courts and immediately knew it was him. It had been a long way for him to flee and fly. He was also the one with the severe backhand slice that no one could retrieve. He became my tennis mentor. I learned the American whist serve and the unreturnable heavy slice, a host that I've never seen since. It floats across, deifying gravity, then dies and lands and squiggles low across the ground, never coming up. penetrate deep into the cosmos. Even in the darkest spots, living beings are able to hear it clearly, so that all suffering in them cease, understanding come to their heart, and they transcend the path of sorrow and death. Mm-hmm. 
The universal Dharma door is already open. The sound of the rising tide is heard clearly. The miracle happens. A beautiful child appears in the heart of a lotus flower. One single drop of this compassionate water is enough to bring back the refreshing spring to our mountains and rivers. Listening to the bell, I feel the afflictions in me begin to dissolve. My mind calm, my body relaxed. A smile is born on my lips. Following the sound of the bell, my breath brings me back to the safe island of mindfulness. In the garden of my heart, the flowers of peace bloom. Beautiful. Oh, mm-hmm.